spring is springing. It's doing that springy thing it does every time in springtime. Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. You know, spring is starting to peak its little tiny little head out here and there. Um, I thought it would be really cool to do some botanical journaling and capture some of those early spring forms that are so fleeting. Now flowers and blooms and all that stuff is beautiful, I mean, when they come out, but sometimes it's neat to catch botanical forms in all of their little stages. And that's what I'm doing in this video. I found a little pine branch on a short needle pine and uh, the little bitty buds that come out and turn into frankly heavy pollen producers but eventually become pine cones. And so today I'm going to show you or take you through that painting. But in general it's just a really fun thing to do. It's just to take botanical forms that are you know in your yard, around your yard, uh, if you're in an apartment, in the apartment grounds or the park across the street or up the street. You know, you don't have to go far and just catch them at those little stages. You can get close up photos and if it's still cold outside, you can bring them in the house and I clipped off this little branch here. And there's an example of some of the pods there, but I mainly did it because I'm also going to do a painting of the full mature pine cone and that'll be featured on Patreon for my supporters there. But let's get to this painting and I'll show you how I did it. And I also am using for the very first time Kilimanjaro, this Kilimanjaro wirebound journal. This is a pretty nice paper and I, I don't do a lot of comments on it in this video. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a com couple comments here. It's a bright white paper. It's 100% cotton. And one of the neat things about this sketchbook is that ev in between every watercolor page they put a drawing page. Uh, I think it makes a great cover sheet for your paintings but it also is something you can draw on and do a little study preliminary sketches then flip then do a painting on the watercolor paper. It's just a high quality cotton 100% cotton paper. Uh, there has been speculation nobody knows for sure where Cheap Joe's gets their Kilimanjaro manufactured. Uh, Saunders Waterford is a good guess. The texture is almost identical. I have some Saunders Waterford. I don't have the bright white. I have the cream colored. But the textures do look identical. It's a little hard to tell though. So not sure. But it is a European mill that it comes from. It may come from St. Cuthbert's Mill. It may come. Some people have speculated that it's a Fabriano. But there are several really good mills in Europe, uh, in France in particular, so it might come from one of those. Uh, I will just tell you in advance, I really, really had a good time and enjoyed painting on this paper. So we will get to painting. Hey Reese, hold it down over there, you're making too much noise. I got recording to do. Alrighty campers, so here we go. Starting out with a pencil sketch, as you might guess for such a complex subject. And it's just fairly simply drawn. You can see how complex the needles are here. This is my photo. And I recomposed it a little bit. See those little pine cone pods there? Those will kind of get bigger and then produce all kinds of nasty pollen. And then some of them will actually turn into mature pine cones. But the needles I did fairly simply, just a simple line. They do have some thickness to them as you can see. But I just indicated them with a line, which is really all I need. Because next I'm going to put some masking fluid on. And I want to have kind of a... Uh, out of focus background. Now I'm going to put this masking fluid on with a brush rather than my little kind of silicone applicator. The brush just allows me to get finer and I always soap up a brush. Uh, these are this is a cheap synthetic. Don't use your good watercolor brushes for this. Uh, I buy cheap synthetic set and then I soap them so that the uh, mask won't dry in them or stick and clog it up and even then I'll, I'll you know rinse them out every now and then don't rinse it in your paint water though get a separate little container of water but just following my lines you know it naturally produces a thickness so I don't need to go trying to f draw the exact thickness of these needles that's kind of overkill 
I'm going to the trouble of masking all this because the effort is worth it, especially on a nice botanical like this. Um, I'm going to have a dark background and I want these to really pop. And so I'm, I'm just kind of masking in all of those little needles. I'll figure out with the painting as I paint them what ones go in front of the other. Um, I won't worry about that right now. I just want some nice white space, you know, to paint in with my needles. And of course you let the mask thoroughly dry. Now I'm thoroughly wetting the background. I'm getting that all nice and soaked. I'm on a fairly steep angle so that stuff's running right down to the bottom. little cobalt violet here starting out with and I'm going to brush in several colors a little Prussian blue just let it all mingle wet and wet and I'm going as I said you know with sort of an out of focus bokeh background effect this is a little phthalo blue And so I'm, I'm making some of this kind of jut up at the angle that the, my branches were drawn at. And now you, here you can see I'm drawing some of those kind of branch shapes. So those will spread out and get much softer. So they're a lot more pronounced appearing. That was a little sap green that I threw in there. And gradually, bit by bit, this paper starts to dry. And the more it... I mean, it's still plenty wet, but the more it dries, uh, the more distinct your brush marks become and the less they spread. Right now, they're still spreading quite a bit. Right behind those kind of yellow-green pods, I want some nice dark contrast. So I'm throwing in a little Payne's Gray there. Now you can see I kind of have a, a angular background shape that matches my branch, but I also have a kind of cantilever shape going off to the right, and the whole thing forms like sort of a V. Paper's a little drier now, so you see these strokes spreading less and less. And it's probably just mixes of color from my palette. Uh, I've got all that color out there, the, the sap green, the phthalo blue, the Prussian blue, and I just just start mixing till I see colors I don't want to put down. That's looking pretty good. I think I've got a good background. And here I hit it with some spritz. I, the sprayer was off camera, but you can see the little dots developing. I waited till it started drying to a point where I would get some miniature backgrounds. And here it's dry. I think I went in dry brush and added a little more Payne's Gray, but uh, you saw what those little spritz droplets did in the background, made these nice little circlets. So time to lift the mask. This Kilimanjaro paper takes mask real well. Didn't have a bit of problem with tearing or lifting. Get a lot of comments about people having trouble with mask tearing or lifting their paper. Nine times out of ten it will do it on pulp paper. Uh, it will even do it on certain cotton papers. You just have to test. I never have a problem on arches. This Kilimanjaro proved not to be a problem. And uh, usually using this rubber cement pickup, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty aggressive way to pick up the mask. And now the long, tedious process of painting these needles, although I found it a lot of fun. I didn't think it was all that tedious. I just start out with some really light uh, washes to paint them in. 
and I try to keep one side of the needle, my, my light source is off to the left. So I want to keep one side of the needle almost white. White and stark as I fill these in. You can see how they vary. But they vary in darkness and, and they vary uh, from needle to needle and they vary from tip to base. And as I add these colors, I'll go back to real time here a bit. I add these colors, I, I start differentiating how the needles are layered. And this I'm working on the stems or the branches. And in my reference, they're pretty much black, and that's the way I'm going to treat them. I'm actually using like a, a mix of colors, and right now I, I can't remember what colors. I didn't, I don't use black, so this is probably a mix of greens and dark reds and maybe some Payne's gray but those branches appear almost black and I'm being careful to save you know plenty of white for the needles but I just want enough darkness in those branches to contrast with the background so at least you can see where the needles are coming from Normally in painting a pine tree, you, you would never get this detailed with needles, especially if you weren't close up. But since it's an extreme close up and it's a botanical, um, I'm getting very detailed. And it's just, I just love painting this kind of detail. I just really, really, really love it. It's just, I've, it's so satisfying to me. I'm just going to fill in the the buds with some light yellow green. I've got azo green here mostly. Probably dipping in some uh, nickel azo yellow, which is sort of a green gold. And I just, I wanted to get this to some state of definition for these old buds before I got much further on the needles. Because those needles kind of work around them. So I'm delineating, you know, where these clusters are. They're sort of like upside down clusters of grapes. And I'm sort of outlining them but I will shade them more later I don't want to treat these purely as an outline but I just want to see you know know where they are as I'm working on the rest of the painting and this is just a little bit of, of transparent orange oxide sometimes mixed in with a nickel as a yellow And I'm starting to dot in some of the recesses and the darker areas. And sculpt those little buds. They were pretty light yellow green with little touches of brown here and there. And we'll continue on with the needles. And I'm starting to pick out layers, like what needle goes behind another. But I am doing that kind of generally and suggestively. I'm not laboriously trying to f paint in every single needle. I, I am picking out just enough overlap and shadow. So it does look like some are in front, some are behind, and some are in back. And I will leave quite a bit of white on the edge of these of these needles. And, and what I'll do, and you'll see this, is as I finish it, I'll knock some of those back. Because the contrast and the starkness of the definition is too much to have them all be quite so light. And all have quite so light an edge. But I want to start out that way and see the thing as a whole. It's always important when you're painting in detail to not forget that 
the whole is more important than the parts. Even though you're involved in the parts, you constantly have to look at them as the whole. And I wanted to show you this close-up work here, just so you can see what I'm doing. And how you can see it's, when you're this close up, I'm not being that finicky. Um, just enough of an impression of some being darker and some not. Your eye doesn't, with this kind of confusion, doesn't distinguish that much. And it'll look over-rendered if you, if you try to, like, laboriously paint every needle just perfect. And this is a good example of, of keeping the whole in mind rather than the parts. I, I switch from the needles to kind of sculpting these little pods and then back to the needles and then back to these. And just trying to, to adjust the value of all of it equally. And I'm killing some of the white edges now, is what you see. I think I pretty much painted in on the needles, but I'm going in and killing some of those highlights on the edges so that all the needles don't look quite so stark as I mentioned before. It's quite a lot of stepping back, squinting and looking and seeing, and then finally satisfied. And I could probably knock some of them back even more, but I'm going to go ahead and pull off the tape. I do have a nice straight even border, but I think the lens uh, is distorting that edge a little bit on this image. And more adjusting, and probably even after this video, I'll continue to adjust a little bit more. But I'm pretty happy with that. Got a nice little botanical rendition of what I captured with my camera. And a fleeting form of these buds, which in a few weeks will be completely gone. And the great thing about journaling like this, uh, botanically, is you just, you remember these times and these seasons and the things around you and the things around your yard. Um, you remember them more and you celebrate them. You celebrate the big forms as well as the intricate little details. And, and that's what I do, aside from just really enjoying it. Now, I, this is uh, the pine cone, a fully developed pine cone and I'm adding to the spread and I will have a full painting demonstration of this on Patreon in the Sketchbook Peaks. So if you're a patron, you can go on there and check that out. That should be coming along soon. Thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was a help. Thank you patrons for all your fantastic support. I now have an Amazon store and that link will be down in the video description and that's just uh, products like what I post in the description anyway. Um, but if you're looking for something, go down there, check out the store and give it a look. And as usual, buying through Amazon supports this channel. Thank you everybody. We'll see you in the next video.